So this is gonna be a little, little update of all the tanks here uh, at Garage Aquatics 2023 World Headquarters. Uh, it's probably gonna be a little long, so, you know, if it is, just hit the pause button and come back to it at some point. Grab something to eat, something to drink, make yourself comfortable, give it a watch, give it a like, if you will, if I've earned it, give it a, a, a subscription if I've earned that, Give me your comments. I haven't done a fish room update in a while. This is as good a place as any to start. I have no idea how he got the name. I call him Sport. I walk in here in the morning, I go, morning Sport. I leave at night and I go, good night, Sport. This is my office. This is that five gallon marine land tank with the rounded, it's glass. It's on a little base, little like a little pedestal base. Uh, and, and it's got the, in the back filter area that I did a modification uh, because ultimately I want to keep shrimp in here. Uh, but he is gorgeous, isn't he? I really like this guy. He's just, what a cool fish. And I also did that video setting up this tank and how I built this, I call it a Franken tree. And it's full of that white biofilm right now. It'll eventually just go away. Uh, I was thinking about dropping a couple auto sinkless in here. Eventually, I'm going to put the green jade shrimp in here, and I'll, I'll put him somewhere else. But I just, I needed some company in here. I want to put somebody in here, so I took him. He came out of one of those uh, low plastic tubs from the garage. He was out there with some guppies and some shrimp. He'd probably do fine with the shrimp, but I don't want to chance him eating the green jades, because that's what I want to put in here. And I, uh, so I glued that chunk of wood to this rock and wrapped a piece of uh, that same spider wood around it, make it look like a little root. This is slate that I, I bought a, a box of slate from Amazon and busted it up into smaller pieces and put the dwarf sag in the front and um, crypts in the back and that piece of uh, Anubius there. And there's a little bit of uh, Swasatang right there. And there's another piece hiding around the back here and hopefully it'll take off um, and some hornwort. So when I put Sport in here, I figured he needed something to float in. And he does. He gets, he goes and kind of wraps himself up in the hornwort. And that's where he sleeps at night. He's really a cool fish. And then I put some uh, um, Java Fern, the window of Java Fern in here too. And there's a substrate underneath all this that's used substrate with a little bit of pond soil. And then uh, covered in pool filter sand. So that's this tank. So this tank is also in my office. This is a 20 gallon and it's full of these kids, little Mickey Mouse platies. There's uh, mostly orange sunburst and maybe some orange also. And then the green jade shrimp uh, took me two goes because I think possibly the, uh, the adult Mickey Mouse platies that used to live in here uh, might've snacked on a few. And there's, there's some down here. There's, there's one there. Uh, that's a nice one right there. And they're here. The vendor said they go through a lot of like color phases. So, and there's also new fry in here. So I'm thinking how the hell can any of these be making babies? So I don't know if some of these just haven't grown up yet. And then there's, I forget now, five or six bronze quarries in, in here as well. And then there's also the odd snail. Snails are odd. And on the top here, I've got some hornwort floating. Let me get up. And then I've also, I'm gonna take you around the other side and I've got this floating plant. That stuff, it's called Rickia water spangle. It's kind of a cool floater. And then I got this pot of pot full of Cryptwenii. It's a cool way to grow, uh, grow plants in terracotta pots or plastic pots, I suppose. I like terracotta. And there's an Anubius back there on that old chunk of spider wood. And there's a Bulbitis there. I put some Jungle Val here. That one is not where I put it. I put them back here along the back edge of the tank. This tank's almost set up like a peninsula. It's sitting on this old blue crate with this end against the window. And it sticks out. And it's kind of a divider, a room divider when you walk in. And then there are a bunch, of, a bunch more crypt. Uh, Wendy Eye, the red or the bronze or brown or whatever you call it and a little bit of a dwarf sag in the front. So mostly, this was a tank that I had. Hillstream loaches, didn't go well, twice. 
And then I took that all apart and uh, put the Mickey Mouse platies in here and you can see what happened there. And then I uh, added the, the green jade shrimp and it didn't go great the first time. So I got another round and now they're doing well. And I'm starting to see smaller ones. Uh, no, that one took off. There was one on the horn right there and there's another one hanging upside down right there. Let me put my finger in there, right above there. And then that one there. So some of these look a lot like Blue Dream. So we'll see how this pans out. I will start culling at some point. I'm gonna wait for the population to, to get a little bigger. Um, and these Mickey Mouse platies, you can go to my eBay store. I sell these there. Uh, I've got a lot of them. Great fish though, really prolific, fun, uh, really pretty. This is the new tub, waiting for the fish. Um, right now it's just plants. I did a video on setting this up and how I set the plants in the, the tubs down there in these little little troughs. There's uh, Jungle Val over at that end and Amazon Swords at this end. And some wharf water lettuce and a little bit of red root floater floating around on it so far. So this is a work in progress. This is my little 12 inch cube. So it's, you know, about seven and a half gallons thereabouts. Less substrate rocks wood, plants, fish, and there's a uh, shrimp. Um, there's a couple little glow light tetras in here still. I think I had six and there's one and I see one on the other side here, right there. I'd like to get a couple more in here. And I've got these little least keely fish. Focus, there's one, there's a couple more in here. And then there's some there, there's uh, one up here. Oh, a couple of them. They're, they're kind of elusive. There's several. Oh my gosh, there's a whole bunch of small ones now. And then um, there's some pygmy quarries in here. Started with six. I have no idea how many there are. I would love to see little pygmy quarries. And then I, I don't remember. Started with half a dozen red cherry shrimps. There's, there's probably a hundred in here now. They just come and go. Uh, and then plants. Uh, this dwarf sag started with four and it spread like crazy. And I, I put a couple more on the side over here too, and also spread like crazy. And there's uh, this tall slender plant here is uh, Cryptochorine spiralis. And then there's this uh, Cryptochorine wentii, uh, red, bronze, brown, I'm not sure what they call them. And this is part of a video I did when I was, uh, uh, thinning these out. This had taken over this whole corner, several of them. So I thinned them all out. There's two in there now. Um, I could thin these out too. Look at how tangled they're getting. And it's a great place to catch a lot of mulm also. And then there's a little uh, uh, Anubius here and some uh, uh, the Wendell of Java Fern and then the other Java Fern back here and some big red cherry shrimp. And there's some in here that look like they're just about black. Uh, very cool. This, this is, I love this little tank. I got this on Amazon probably about a year ago now, maybe a little more. And it's, I set it up and I've never done anything to it other than uh, um, water changes and, and not even real frequently. A lot of times I just top it off and I use the Brita and you know, I don't know what that pulls out. It doesn't pull out the chloramines from what I understand. So I still use a API tap water conditioner to treat for chloramines. And, and there's two of the glow light tetras in front. I really like those, they're pretty little fish. I've been wanting to do a, a egg scattering breeding project. Maybe I will try those. I'll grab a, grab a handful of them and at the local PetSmart and grow them up and maybe give it a shot in a 10 gallon tank, that'd be fine. But anyway, this is a cool little tank. I know I digress there. I tend to do that, you all know that. And I've got this little tiny hang on back filter and also a little tiny sponge filter in here. And maybe it's redundant, but you know, it's been working really well for over a year. So I have no reason to change it. Side view. When I scrape the glass, I only scrape the glass on the front and this side. Uh, the other side I leave, and the back I leave covered with algae. I'll scrape the other side occasionally, the left side, only because once in a while it just seems like it needs to. But the, the shrimp feed off of it. Got some twigs in here too that I put in. 
shrimp feed off those and makes bio slime. And there's also a little bit of, uh, uh, oh, the hydrocotyl Japan that's just never really done well in here, but it survives. A little piece of it right down here. A little clover-like leaf. Really a pretty plant when it's doing well. Anyway, that's this tank. This is the first tank I got when I got back into fish keeping. It's a 60 liter, 16 gallon water box tank, rimless tank. And it's been set up now. It'll be two years in January. This coming January, 2025. And I bought it online, uh, waterbox.com. And it shipped from Florida. Got here in one piece, well wrapped, well packed. And it's been sitting here ever since. Come with the little, the little foam pad also. So that's sitting under it. It's a well-planted tank, well being heavily. And a lot going on. Uh, it started with 21 neon tetras. I think I'm down to 10 or 11 now. And that's uh, just attrition. I, I know at least three jumped over the time. There's no lid on the tank. Right now the water level's a little low. There's a couple different Anubias. I think this is Congenensis or Congoensis. I'm not sure. A and a different one. And I couldn't tell you what the Anubias are. And I've got some Sag Sagittarius subulata down at the front. And you can see these, or maybe you can't. The glare is right. There's a little cryptochorine. There's another one, right? From this big one. They shoot out runners. And this was part of that tank where I did that video on thinning out the crypts. And I must have pulled 20 crypts out of here. They had gone from here all the way down to here and they were going around the corner. In fact, back here behind that piece of wood, there's another little bitty one. And then there's hydrocotyl Japan in here, big patch of it. It does well in this tank. And, and a big patch of Christmas moss that uh, that nasty ass hair algae is probably doing better than anything else. Uh, and Java fern, there's Java fern back there. And there's Java fern over there. On two big, well, more than that, there's one big chunk. Well, actually, I don't know how many were in here. There's maybe half a dozen big chunks of Sirius stone. And this Mopani, big piece of Mopani. And I love the way the Java fern attaches to the wood and spreads. It is just so cool. I had a couple Amazon swords in here that before I realized they were way too much plant for this little tank. So they're out, they, they were, they're in another tank now and we'll see that in a bit. And uh, I did a video on uh, propagating Amazon swords from those plants. So you can check that one out. So I've got a, another piece of uh, spider wood, I guess attached to this chunk of Mopani, and it's popping up out of the top of the tank here. So this one's in the kitchen. Behind this is the kitchen sink. So we'll go over there in just a second. While we're here, I set this jar up. Let me turn the light on. And it's just an old one gallon jar. And there's a couple cherry shrimp in there. And a philodendron, it's the green one. And uh, you know what, I take that back. That is not the philodendron, that is an anthurium. There is philodendron in here, this green one back here, and coming up out of the tank right here. And then there's also a pothos, and I'm not sure which pothos that is, but I, it's a little bit of substrate, then a little bit of sand on top of it and a couple rocks, and I just dropped cuttings in there and they've rooted down into the substrate now. And I know you can't see any of that because of the glare, but it's, a, it's been a cool jar. I mean, there are also three clown plecos in here. There's a couple auto sinkless in here. And there is Vanellope von Schweetz. She is just hanging out back there on the rock in the Java fern. She's getting old, so, you know, I don't know how much longer we're gonna have her. Then there's also some albino quarries in here. They started out with six adults. Now there are two juveniles as well. And between all the soap and everything in there, that is one of the juveniles right there. And then one of the adults um, and I don't see any of the clown plecos right now. They kind of come and go. I would love to come around one day and see clown pleco babies in here. Could happen. It's been a couple years that they've been in here. So they should be getting sexually mature before too, too long. More nubious. I've done a video in this tank about how I was having problems with the, the leaves, uh, you know, kind of getting distorted, uh, a lot of holes. Uh, same thing with the java fern and i think we nailed it down to potassium deficiency so when i fertilize i fertilize with extra potassium as well i use i was using api uh leaf green easy green no whatever it's called 
uh, the API fertilizer. And then I was using uh, Easy Green, the aquarium co-op. Now I'm using the uh, Select Aquatics Rapid Grow. But I also add the Seachem uh, Flourish Potassium. And Vanellope's tucked away back in there. So can't really see her right now. But I like this tank. This is a cool tank, you know, just doing dishes, whatever, in the kitchen, you just stare at it. It's really pretty. Now we're in the garage of Garage Aquatics 2023 World Headquarters. And this is a little five and a half gallon um, with, I don't know how many are in there, dozen, 15, 16 little Crebensis fry, half albinos, half species, again. Uh, and somewhere back there, and there he is, little albino quarry, or maybe she, there it is, a little uh, albino quarry glass surfing uh, from the kitchen. They light eggs uh, a second time, and I was able to only capture a couple. Um, and this one's ready to go in with uh, its parents and its older siblings. And then these, I just got to figure out what the hell I'm going to do with them. Uh, and there's some Swasitang in here. Uh, another crypt in a, in a ceram or a terracotta pot, and um, a pothos and some hornwort too, and red cherry shrimp, bunch of red cherry shrimp in here, and then a, a pothos that sort of fell off the side and submerged itself, and they still grow like that. Uh, and then this jar is uh, sea monkeys, uh, live brine shrimp, uh, adult brine shrimp that keep multiplying, and I got to figure out, I got to clean this thing out and take care of them, and start it over. It was uh, one of those iced tea jars from uh, Hobby Lobby. Works great. Works really good. And all that's in there is just an air stone. Uh, I put some, uh, I think they're called Zoes from a, a mono shrimp that dropped. And uh, I thought, you know, it's just too, too saline for them to survive. So they need more brackish water to go through their metamorphosis. Unlike uh, cherry shrimp, or neocaridinas that don't do a metamorphosis. They just, uh, um, they just, well, I guess it's kind of a, what is it? A, no, it's not. It, it's just, they get bigger, they molt, they get bigger, they molt. So anyway, so that's those. So that's this little tank with the fry in it. And I really like the Savasa tank. I know some people hate the stuff. I know it can really get going in some tanks, but it's just barely going here. It's working. This is one of my two 40 gallon, actually three 40 gallon breeders. Two of them I got on offer up uh, used. This is one of those. Water level's really no, low right now, and I gotta change it. This is the home of Bob and Carol, and there's Bob outside and Carol inside, and they're, they may or may not be sitting on another spawn, and that's where the fry from that little five and a half gallon came from. Uh, they had devoured the previous several spawns, so I siphoned that batch out. And then I've got some false Julie Corys in here. There's a big chunk of wood in here that uh, I rescued from along the railroad tracks along the I-10 here in Palm Desert. Um, and actually there's some more in the other tank that we're coming up to. And a little bit of dwarf sag and some Anubias and I was trying some stuff with spawning mobs, so there it sits. And there's uh, a couple different uh, swords in here. Uh, there's uh, one's called Red Melon and the others, I forget, but anyway. And then all this, and they're really pretty. Look at the big, big leaves with that red in it. Really big, fat, wide leaves. I love these. Yeah, and eventually, hopefully, they will start sending runners like the green Amazon swords. Uh, and there's cryptocorine under here. Again, a lot of crypt. I bought a lot, and I just it spread out for me. Uh, I started propagating cryptocorine, so I need to do that again. Do more, um, so I can uh, uh, put it on my eBay store. And there's a couple big plecosauruses. They are some sort of a, a albino red eye. I got these at, at PetSmart and they're they're big and probably only gonna get bigger. Uh, and then there's some ember tetras in here and I really like these. I wanna get some more for that uh, Marineland tank in the office where the, uh, the bed lives. They're pretty. And then guppy grass, loads and loads of guppy grass. I sell that on my eBay store uh, and I get, I sell out a little bit of duckweed I gotta fish out of there and some more of that Ricky water spangle back there. And so then I, I just pull it off my eBay store for a while. And all of a sudden I got tanks full again and I start over. And right next to it is this other 40 breeder. And I think this is the first one I got. I think I paid 30 bucks for it. Uh, and I paid uh, 35 for the other one we just saw. 
And this one has gone through several iterations of fish. Right now there's uh, these neon orange sword tails, uh, except for that male that has a liar tail. But all the fry that came out, the original fry that came out were all male sword tails. And here's two of them right there with that black rim on the underside of the sword. Really pretty fish. Uh, and now I got a whole bunch more, uh, real small to not quite as real small. And I don't know what they're gonna be. Some are showing up with the black on, on the back ends now, like that one there. I don't know, uh, and probably, so this might've been the female. Uh, I don't know what they're gonna do when they grow up. If that last batch, couldn't believe it. I must've had 30 males, no females at all. So hopefully this is a different kind of a batch. But anyway, these, uh, this, uh, the tank with the big swords. There's one buried under here. Another one buried under here where they shot out the big flower spikes with little little plantlets. I did a whole video on how to harvest those and pot them up. So check that one out. And then on the top of this tank, it is completely impacted with dwarf water lettuce. Uh, and there's some duckweed in here too that I got to get out. Um, and I sell the dwarf water lettuce on uh, my eBay store. Java fern in here. There's some of these, you can see them there. Uh, they're supposed to be a sail fin uh, Corydora. They're pretty. There were five. I don't know if there still are or not. I don't know. They're, they probably have a hard time breaching in, in this. There's also some autosynclus in here and a lot of red cherry shrimp. And in that tank with Bob and Carol, a lot of red cherry shrimp. Now, I think I mentioned these. This is where the betta in uh, my office came from in, in this tub. A bunch of guppies in here, a bunch of guppy grass, snails, red cherry shrimp. And then uh, in this tank, completely overrun with uh, duckweed and dwarf water lettuce. And there is a really pretty male bed in here that I gotta find, and also red cherry shrimp. And occasionally a guppy. For whatever reason, I pulled male guppies out of there. They jump from this one. That's the only thing I can figure because I never put any in here. They're just weird creatures. And then this is the other 40 breeder. I bought this one brand new, so I paid full price less the 50% discount at Peco. And there's some guppies in here and some Blue Dream shrimp. And I put the guppies in here just because I didn't know what I was going to do with it. And I just didn't want mosquito, uh, you know, taken off in here. And there's a bunch of ramshorn snails and some guppy grass and uh, some Amazon swords in pots. And these are the swords, the little plants that I pulled off those, uh, those runners from the big swords in the, in the tank above this, this is directly above this. And then there's this chunk of uh, manzanita wood with some bucephalandra on it. And, and there was a lot more and a lot of it died off, but the pieces that are on it now are actually kind of doing good. So we'll see how they keep doing well. There's a lot of mulm in the bottom, and a lot of that's uh, soilless mix or whatever from the uh, from the pots. I took a lot of the crypt out of here and put them in a tub in my new or in, in a tray in a plastic like a storage bin, uh, and they're out in the new uh, the new tub waiting for fish on that. This is a 29 gallon. It's full of crevences, and these are juveniles. They're about a year old now, maybe a. Uh, 16, 16 months, something like that. I don't remember exactly when, but they are Bob and Carol's offspring. The Bob and Carol, the albinos we saw in that first 40. And there's a couple of cryptocorian, and I cannot remember the species on these in the pots. It starts with a U, and if I remember to do that, I will put that up in, a, uh, it might start with a P. I got two different cryptocorians from Terrace Tank Friends. And uh, I've got the names somewhere. I, they're just not in my head. So anyway, and it's just kind of like the LRB rock pile here. And I'm actually waiting for these crypts. Maybe they'll, or these crypts, these uh, crevences, uh, they might just spawn for me in here. I don't know. There's so many of them. Um, there's males and females. I've slowly uh, sold a few off. They're pretty. The iridescence is spectacular. But again, it's getting covered with the horn wart. There's a big philodendron just going through the water here. I'm sorry, a big pothos. And there's, uh, it's uh, Salvinia minima on the top and some dwarf water lettuce again. And then a little tank with some guppies. And I've been throwing handfuls of plants in here. Just 
bits and pieces. There's uh, guppy grass, but there's these bits and pieces of uh, cryptochorine, just these uh, runners. And I think there's there's buds on them, so I think eventually they will make shoots along them. So I just leave them in there. They're green. They're not hurting anything. There's some few pieces of swasatang in there. There's also uh, some little bits of java fern that got tossed in there. So they're, they're cool. And then here, I've talked about this a lot on the live streams and I've done other videos on this. These are my betta juveniles. They are just a year old last month in October. Um, October 2024 they are. So October 2023 is when they were when they were born. And I moved uh, a couple big plecosauruses back in there. There's one. And there's the other. And these came from a tank down below, what we'll see in a minute. Uh, and then there's a bronze corridor in here. And they grew up with the, the bettas. Uh, literally, they, they were just a couple days apart age-wise. Uh, and they, they, you know, they were fried together in the same 20-gallon uh, fish tank with about four or five inches of water. Um, but this is a cool tank. Some of those, uh, another one of those crypts like we saw in the other tank, they're doing really well in this tank. And then there's an Amazon sword there. And then there's this other crypt. That's the one that either starts with the U or the P. Pretty plant. Took a while to get going, and now it's just taken off really pretty. There's another one of those right here. Uh, I think this one is red melon, this Amazon sword. It's in this little pot back here, this little little ceramic pot. And one of the red lotus. Uh, there's a bulbitis here, up here, going up here, right? And then there's a piece of hornwort just dangling down there. Little crypts all over the bottom. Uh, this is the Brazilian pennywort right here. It's hanging on, I don't know for how long. Uh, another Amazon sword in the back, baby Groot. Came from my granddaughter for Christmas uh, last year, um, and crypts, and they're, it's kind of funny, they're really flat instead of getting tall, and it might be a function of uh, the substrate and a nutrient level, maybe not, I don't know. And then another type of a sword plant here, and I have to get the tags out to let you know what's what. And then uh, dwarf sag here, and this substrate, was all just like kind of gravel and little bits of uh, volcanic and also fluval stratum, that's the little pellets. Um, and then I just put sand on top of it, drop that, uh, that's an orchid pot, drop that in. And originally I had a, a, a bunch of bits of java fern stuck in all the holes. And this tank got overrun with black beard algae uh, and then it got overrun with blue-green algae. And somehow I managed to beat the blackbeard algae, at least for now. Uh, I know, knock on wood, don't speak too soon, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and the green, the blue-green algae, I used uh, this stuff called Ultra Life. And it did the trick. Um, and uh, uh, fish, safe for the fish. Um, I was talking on, on the stream today about how I had a really pretty blue male in here and then it disappeared. And I was wondering if it could be this one that changed colors and, and it's starting to get blue again. I don't know. I, I don't I don't think. I looked all around the tank, like, you know, if it jumped, I was looking, you know, on the ground, looked in the other tanks because I've had males jump from this tank to the tank behind, which is guppies. They show up in there. I've even had one jump over into, into this little uh, five gallon guppy tank, so not a clue. But this is a pretty batch. And this is the same, these are the brothers and sisters of sport in that five gallon marine land tank in my office. Right, and the air stone's just kind of hanging up in here, taking space, and so is this. This is the tank I often put the, my fry tray across. Uh, so instead of shutting them down, I just put the air stone on that. Because uh, that would actually tie into the bottom of the fry tray to, to cause water to circulate. And then this one just puts air in the fry tray, that, that clear plastic too. So I just dropped them in here. So, so far so good. This is a very cool, very cool tank. I really love the way it's grown in. It's a fun tank. Uh, yeah, there's nothing uh, purist about it with, you know, the plants and the pots and baby Groot and the bettas and all. So, and then the plecos and, or the plecosauruses 
and the bronze quarries. Yeah, a little bit of everything, kind of fun. Yeah, I just put this tank in a video the other day. These are my yellow golden backs, uh, Neocaridina. And there's some on the end of this piece of Mopani and another one up here. And what prompted me to put that video up was one was buried. So I'm gonna start seeing little, uh, little ones. But you can also see all these dots on the glass. This tank is filled with bladder snails. So great controversial subject. A lot of people, oh, snails are good and I don't like them. And that's all there is to it. You know, you gotta do what's best for you in your fish tanks. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. I don't like snails. I, I just, I think they're a nuisance. Somebody suggested a product. Other people said, no, it didn't work. I'm gonna give it a try. I, it showed up today. I got it from Amazon and I'm gonna give it a try and see if I can get rid of some of these snails. Supposed to be shrimp safe. No fish in this tank though, just shrimp. Oh, and there's another red one that I gotta catch out. There were red neocaridina in here and I doubt you guys can see that. It's, uh, you, maybe you can, it's right there. So I need to net that puppy out of here. All right, and this tank right next to the yellow uh, golden back shrimp are orange sunkiss shrimp and it's loaded and bladder snails. And these guppies, and I cannot remember what they were called. I got them at PetSmart. And they're pretty. They're some sort of golden whatever. <laughs> Not a clue. Anybody knows, I would love you to chime in. And there's a couple Amazon swords that I tucked in here. And at the back end of this tank, there is a big uh, big pot full of uh, cryptochorine. Not unlike the one with the Mickey Mouse platies in my office. And it's chuck full of those also. And then this tank, I've got these tuxedo guppies, I guess red tails, tuxedo guppies, lots and lots, and loads of blue dream shrimp, and some panda quarries. And this is the tank that the two plecosauruses that are living with the bettas now uh, came from. And this tank was cloudy and it wasn't, it was cloudy and it wasn't, I took the plecos out and it's not cloudy anymore. So I don't know if it was the bio load was too much I'm not sure, doesn't matter, it's not cloudy right now. And that's what counts. Kind of cool though. And plants, Amazon Sword. This is another tank that loads up with guppy grass. Uh, obviously, so does this one. And then so does this one over here. And these are my sources from my eBay store. Now here are some big scaredy cats. There's the male, female there. Uh, there should be four females and a male. Is that a fish? There are finally fry in here. Oh my, these are a live bear. They are uh, a wild type molly out of the Colorado River, somewhere down around Yuma. I think I saw a fry. Didn't look like this, uh, this shrimp. It's about the same color though. So I'll have to keep an eye out. Uh, been waiting for them to spawn for a very long time. Um, and that would be very cool if it finally happened. And uh, more guppy grass and more cherry shrimp. <laughs> and the patented LRB rock pile in the, back in the middle of the tank here. So I wasn't sure what to do with this, if they needed just a lot of vegetation or if the fry wanted to drop into rocks or what. So I just tried a couple things. You know, when all else fails, punt. Now this is just two tanks over. There's a little empty five in between here. There are five Mickey Mouse platies. I had eight, I lost three. Uh, and these are loads of fry and juveniles. And these are the parents of the ones in the, uh, in the office. They're the parents that I moved out because I think they kind of cleaned out my first batch of the uh, uh, jade, what are they, jade green uh, neocaridinas that are in that tank. So they're orange and orange sunkissed. And they're still making babies. And there's also uh, neo orange uh, sunkissed, I'm sorry, I said orange sunkissed fish orange sunburst and orange, uh, uh, the Mickey Mouse platies. The shrimp are orange sunkissed, all right? They're, uh, toss some in here, so I've got orange sunkissed shrimp in two tanks. And uh, blue dream shrimp in, I guess, two tanks. And red cherry shrimp in, God, I don't know, five tanks. But these guys are prolific, they're fun. Uh, I do like platies. I could see, uh, uh, more varieties of platies. I've seen some really cool ones on, on eBay that I wanted to get, but 
I just don't have a home for them right now. I guess I could put platies, get a pair or a, or a trio platies and put them in the fives. Seems kind of small, especially if they do this. Where's my finger? If they do that, you know, make loads and loads more. Got to find something to do with them. Now around the back from the, the species looking crebensis are these albino crebensis. They are their siblings, same spawn. That right? always blows me away. And there's a couple adults here. I think, um, let me see if I get my finger in there, point that one, and then maybe that one there. It's hard to tell anymore that I actually bought. I bought six originally, Bob and Carol, and uh, two other males, two other females. I lost the two other males. So I finally moved the two other females in here with, the, with these uh, smaller ones. And they're slower growing. These are a lot slower growing than the species ones, which is weird. They're nice. I just shipped some of these across country to Pennsylvania. Apparently they got there in one piece and they, it sounds like they're really happy with me. And I'm really grateful for that because I hate losing fish. And then I've got a couple auto synclus in this tank too. And I love auto synclus. I would love to breed those. I think that would be very cool. But they are pretty. And they're colorful, you know, well, I mean, they're albino, but they, you know, there's uh, their iridescence on their fins and the spots are starting to show up. They're big cowards. When I had a big chunk of Mopani in here, all they did was hide under it. So now they don't know what to do. And this is, these are both that, that last tank with the uh, albino crebensis. In fact, all four of these tanks, the bettas, the species crebensis, the albino crebensis, and this guppy tank are all 29 gallon. And this is just loaded with mutt guppies. Um, lots and lots and lots of mutt guppies. And uh, on top, there's actually a little bit of red root floater. And I used to have that just going nuts, and now I'm trying to get it to go again, and not so much. Uh, and also uh, a little bit of uh, dwarf water lettuce. And lots and lots of guppy grass with guppies. What do you think? And there's also somewhere down in here, there's one, peppered quarries. Hopefully there's still five. I would love for these to spawn also. I'm going to have to get tanks that I can just you know, go for more species and just, you know, really focus on breeding them. But these, yeah, the guppies don't have any problem with that. They just keep making more. So I put these on my eBay page from time to time too. And this is the backside. This is the backside of the yellow Neo Caradina tank. And there's a wad of, uh, oh my God, it's a wad of Java moss that's actually doing all right. And then the backside of the orange sunkiss tank. And there's that big pot full of uh, crypt, cryptocorn green, wenny eye, cryptocorn wenny eye green. And then this is the back side of the tuxedo guppies. There they are. And there's some other plants back in here. There's this long slender leafed one and that's uh, cryptocorn spiralis and another cryptocorn wenny eye down there. And all the blue dream shrimp in all of their glory. And then the back side, there's the male. I can find him. There he is. Uh, the yeah, sorry for the algae on the glass. The wild type molly, and a lot of bladder snails, and the rock pile, and maybe just maybe fry. I'm gonna have to spend some time just staring at this tank and see if that's really what I saw. But like I said, there's four females and a male, and he's kind of aggressive too. I don't know. And then the backside of uh, Mickey Mouse Platy tank. Kind of cool. And then also a side, a side view of the Mickey Mouse Platy tank. And it's just a glass bottom tank on this one. Here's another offer up special. I think it's about eight and a half gallons. It's a cool little tank. It's, it was used for probably reptiles or something because there's, you know, the, the rim's all melted and burned and it had a metal, uh, in fact, it's back there, uh, sort of a metal lid, you know, metal, metal wire lid to keep whatever it was in. Um, and this is the tank I did I had that blue-green algae slime and that, that slime away or what it was called worked really well. Uh, got some little little bitty guppies chasing each other here. Uh, and uh, also uh, had a bunch of other algae. So I used, I took all these pots of crypts out and dosed them in a really heavy dose of peroxide to kill the algae, uh, peroxide and water and killed the algae and did the crypts in too. Well. It's been a while, and the cryptocorin uh, wenny eye in the back recovered. Maybe all but one. There's shrimp in here too. 
And then these were uh, cryptochorine parva did not recover. So they were small, they were uh, tissue culture, they did not make it. So if I want more, I'm gonna have to start over. And then this uh, dwarf hair grass, and I cannot remember, found a little piece floating around, so I potted it here. And then I keep throwing bits and pieces of uh, java fern as they fall off, I just throw them in this tank. And this is a bulbitis of some sort, this, this big trifoliate leaf, and I really like it. But it's just hanging here. It's got a, I gotta find a home for it. And then wads and wads of java fern. And my wife uh, transplanted one of her African violets the other day and broke a chunk off of it. And so I stuck it just hanging in the tank here. And I figured it's not gonna survive it. And it's doing all right, so yay. Uh, and then again, a pot. And I had the last piece of uh, Blixa japonica in this pot. I had two tries at that and they both failed. One little piece was growing in that, that algae uh, fest with uh, hydrogen peroxide killed it off too. Uh, but there's some of the hydrocotyl japan in there. And I think this uh, rounder leaf is uh, Lobelia cardinalis. And, and I don't know what else is in there right now. Might be a bulb from one of the lilies. That, that stem is another piece of that lobelia. I don't grow stem plants well. So maybe just float. I've heard people say, you know, just let them float. Okay. And here's a piece of that, uh, little piece of the uh, Brazilian pennywort that is doing okay. I guess it can, it can really get aggressive. It's a stem plant, so I don't think that's gonna happen anytime soon. And here's my big one. This is my 75 gallon offer up tank. I paid 40 bucks for it. I came with a stand. I told the nice lady to keep the stand because it was not in good shape and I didn't want to have to deal with it. So I just, uh, my wife helped me put this in the back of the pickup truck, took it home and sat on a shelf for a little while and uh, got a whole video on how I set this one up. Those chunks, those are rock, real pieces of rock in the back. They are heavy. And uh, uh, I saw cut those in half lengthwise. And so the video, I show you how I do all that. Uh, setting up a 75 gallon tank, something like that. I don't remember what the title was. And lots of plants. There's uh, bits of java fern back there. And they're not doing well. Uh, hopefully they'll do better. I fertilize regularly and I use the, the Seachem potassium in here to the flourish. Uh, there's a little uh, sort of some sort, whatever the other one was. And with the bettas is a nice uh, uh, tiger lily here. There's crypts back in there. Uh, this is a different sort. One's red melon, the other's something else. Bunch of sag across the bottom. Another another one of those little swords back there is Anubius on a rock on a rock. It's glued to a rock, set on a rock. Uh, more of that Brazilian pennywort. Uh, more crypt. There's a couple pieces. There's one here. Uh, Cryptochorine pink flamingo. There may or may not still be one down here, uh, right in front of that little rock. Um, and then there's this one's actually doing pretty well. And then back there, that uh, kind of corkscrew uh, leaf, Aponogeton. I think it's Aponogeton. Uh, it's a cool, it was a cool bulb. It was a bulb pack that I got the top thin brand from PetSmart. A couple of them survived and, and the rest, you go over here. That one's been floating around for, since I got them. So I don't know if it's ever gonna do anything. This thing right there. Um, this is the tank with uh, my two angelfish. And Merv, you gave me uh, names for them, and I can't remember what they are. Uh, was it orange jello and lemon jello, something like that? I don't remember. And then I dropped a couple pieces of manzanita in here just because I was pruning my mother-in-law's manzanita. So I just took home the pieces and stuffed them in here. Uh, there's a little piece of busa philandra on top there. On uh, Ooh, I almost dropped my phone in the water. On top of that little rock glued in. And then there's uh, this pothos. And there used to be some blue dream shrimp in here. And uh, yeah, I don't know if there still are or not. And there's uh, some bronze quarries. There's probably half a dozen or more. These are the parents of the little bronze quarries in the other tanks. They've spawned several times. And there should also be, well, there was two, whether or not there's any left, Hillstream loaches. And then there were also, God, 10 or 11 clown plecos. And I haven't seen those in I can't tell you how long, 
Water changes used to bring them out. Now I don't see them. I don't know if they just died off or, or what. And then around the side here, I put a, a, a jungle val in here. I think I got two pieces. I don't know where the other one went. Might have been a little one, might have died, might be around somewhere. And then again, that long slender piece is another one of those uh, cryptocorn spiralis. And I like those. And a little piece of the hydrocotyl Japan. Hopefully it'll get going. And a bunch of uh, cryptocorn back here. And there's an Amazon sword tucked in back here. So it'll get really thick and full eventually. And uh, there'll be just a lot, of, a lot of texture, you know, varying texture. Uh, a lot of long slender leaves, but some, you know, some undulating leaves in the crypts and the smooth leaves and the, uh, the Amazon sword. Then the long slender leaves uh, in the, the jungle bell. And then that corkscrew stuff. Hopefully that uh, starts shooting out new foliage here pretty soon. It's been in the tank for quite a while now. So it went through a whole cycle when it was fresh. It really looked cool. And then on top, uh, some more of that Brazilian pennywort just floating around. And a little pothos. No, a little philodendron. Um, so it's, you know, I, yeah, this is this is a cool tank. I have, I really want to get this with, yeah, I don't know, maybe eight or ten angels in here. See if I can. I think, uh, I, I think uh, this one is a female and, and the big one's a male. I think. And hopefully, and they hang out together. Uh, hopefully, if that's the case, they will pair and lay eggs for me. That'd be great. I'd uh, love to see that happen. I love this tank. This is just a, a hoot. And this was really, uh, you know, just a work of, uh, of of love putting this thing together, cutting all that rock. All this rock is setting on some half-inch styrofoam. And there's a piece of half-inch styrofoam going up the back that I spray-painted black so you can just barely see it along the top there. Um, and there's ram's horns in here. They, I just let them go and I regret it now. What did I put in here? I think it was a bunch of mixed use substrate with pond soil, fluval stratum, a thick layer of fluval stratum, as I recall. And, uh, uh, and then, you know, uh, pool sand over it uh, to cap it. And then I, uh, I fertilize periodically. Uh, you know, every, at least, I try to do it every week to 10 days. Uh, I put a reminder on my phone so I, uh, so I don't forget. And usually when I do a water change, then I fertilize. Um, and I used a CO2 boost as well. And I also go through here every, every so often and put the API root tabs. I'll just shove them under the root zone with the, the tweezers. And it seems to help there with that pink, that pink flamingo crypt. Uh, I don't know, that one just, I don't know. Hopefully there's still it's still down there, you know, the root mass hopefully is still alive. We'll see, I'll, I'll root around for it and see if I can find it. And this one's sort of still going on, but there it is. So anyway, that's the Garage Aquatics 2023 World Headquarters tour of all the tanks. Here, we'll just throw this in just for, you know, it's in giggles. Uh, I bought some little pot, a couple little pots of uh, Monte Carlo and put it in substrate in this old salad tub and keep it moist. And and it's growing. It's been growing like that for, God, I don't know, it's gotta be, you know, since the first of the year. It's not, it's not dead, it's not doing great, but it's not dead, it's not doing bad. And I, I don't know, maybe one of these days I'll stick some in the bottom of the tank somewhere and see what it does. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. I know it's gonna be a long one, but you know, that's what the tank, or the tour updates are. Let me know what you think. I always love the feedback and uh, suggestions. As always, uh, thanks for looking.